Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. Today's video is a weekend progress vlog slash project specific vlog depending on how you want to look at it. This weekend I was working on a 1950s ensemble which I'm currently wearing and I thought it'd be fun to document my thought process as well as my progress over those two days. I actually really enjoyed filming this video. I feel like two days is easier to commit to than an entire week of filming. And because it was a shorter period of time, I didn't have to worry about things getting out of context or filming too much and ending up with hours upon hours of footage. So I really enjoyed filming this video, and if you guys enjoy watching it, then definitely let me know. I think I could do these on a pretty regular basis. Now this video will take you through the process of finishing up a swing coat made out of a beautiful green wool, as well as the hat I'm currently wearing and this lovely dress. I really enjoyed this project and I'm really happy with the outcome, so I hope you enjoy seeing it come together. Just a warning before we get into this and you're unfamiliar with my vlogs, there isn't going to be any footage of me sewing in this video, it's more about my thought process and seeing things come together gradually rather than a tutorial or instructional video. And on that note, here it is and I hope you enjoy! So I just got some news that I'm really super excited about and I can't wait to share it with you guys. I think you will probably actually hear about that news before this video goes up. Also, hi, you can see me in the mirror, uh, but I'm not going to mention it now just in case. Anyway, today I am working on my first project of 2018 and it is a 1950s ensemble. I've wanted to make this for several months, but this urge has deeply intensified after watching the show Miss Maisel on Amazon Prime. I swear I'm like a walking advertisement for that show. I liked it, but what I really loved was the wardrobe. The costuming in it was just beautiful. I think they used a lot of original vintage too. Regardless, it was very, very inspiring to me and now I want to make a 1950s swing coat and a shirt waist dress to go underneath it. I haven't completely settled on the design for the dress. The design I had in mind, I think it's a little bit too 1940s and to pull off these balloon sleeves, I would need a much softer fabric than the one I have for the dress. So I'm going to shelve this design for right now and I've been looking through this textbook from the 1950s to try and get inspiration. I actually found this book for $2 at a sale in Pennsylvania. And I looked online and this book is worth about 100 so I caught a good deal on it and I really like it. It has all these variations of necklines and how to accomplish all of them. So it's a really, really cool book and I've been using it for inspiration for this piece. While I puzzle over the design for the dress, I've gotten started on the coat and I, I, I don't know how I feel about it. I feel like it's going to be really, really far off, but I also want to get it transferred to paper so I can make a mock-up. And if the mock-up does come out well, then it would be repeatable. Uh, but yeah, I, I don't feel like this is going to be a success right off the back. I think it's going to take several variations to get what I want. Uh, this is just a stand-in for the bow. This is the collar. I put slits in it so it will sit smoothly over the shoulder. The back is pleated to offer a little bit of shape, and then it goes out to be relatively wide. Also, I still need to clean my shelves and stuff. I apologize for the mess, and the mess on the floor for that matter. But yeah, that's it so far. So I'm going to pull this off the dress form, transfer it to paper, and hope for the best as I make my mock-up. I find things like this sort of nerve-wracking since they don't hug the body. There's no real correct way for it to fit. It's more how you want it to fit. Uh, so it's kind of a judgment call as opposed to really obvious that it doesn't fit. I'm also really concerned this is going to be unflattering. It's kind of one of those things where it's a really exaggerated silhouette. So if it is unflattering, does that mean you take it in and try and make it more figure-hugging or let it out and just kind of embrace the volume and make it look really intentional as opposed to you ate too much for breakfast? Hello everyone and welcome to a new day. Today is actually day three of trying to make a 1950s inspired swing coat and progress has been going pretty well. As you can see, I have the front panels cut out, I have the buttonholes done, I have the buttons sewn on. They're really large and I love them. I picked them up on Etsy. I can link the seller down below in case you're interested. The front edge of these panels are lined with a floral cotton sateen, as is the upper portion of the raglan sleeve. This has the welted buttonholes, which I've never actually done on a project before. I've done the month's watches and samples before, but never on an actual project. So the front doesn't look too bad, but the lining around them is pretty ugly. So that's unfortunate, but it's a learning process. And then the back looks like this. So it's pleated, and then there's a bunch of top stitching. So my goal for today is to finish this if I can. Last night, I did attempt to sew one of the side seams together, but I did not end up lining things up very nicely underneath the underarm. So I'm going to rip that seam out and redo it, and then I have to top stitch across it and all of the fun stuff that comes with working with a heavyweight wool. Speaking of this wool, though, I'm absolutely in love with it. You don't see green a lot in apparel fabric, so when I saw heavy wool in this color, I jumped on it. It's from fabricwarehouse.com, and I purchased a pre-cut, so it was like $9 a yard or something uh, really reasonable like that. 
and I've had just enough to make this coat with a little bit left over for a hat and the collar. Alright, so, so it's a lot later in the day. I got the side seams done early on and they went pretty well and then it was time to work on the sleeve. So I did the upper seam and then I top stitched one side down and then I've been messing around with the cuffs for probably like two hours today. It's ridiculous how long this has taken me. And the reason it's taken me so long is because I'm not happy with it. They're supposed to flip out like this, but I feel like the edges are too bulky. It just isn't elegant looking. And as much as I love this material, I don't like the fact that it's visible on this portion of the coat because that means it's less versatile with other dresses. Though this material will go with pink and green and ivory and yellow and all sorts of colors that won't work very well with cooler tones like purple or blue, which the green does work really nicely with. So I don't think I want to do that. However, I've made these sleeves long enough that the cuff needs to turn up. So if I'm going to get rid of this lined cuff, that means I basically just have to cut it off. So I think that's what I'm going to do, and I'm going to sew on, ow, just burn myself on the heater, that's great. I've cut out a few rectangles of the wool, so I think what I'm going to do is just chop this part off, and then sew on a new cuff, and hopefully it will look awesome, and I can move forward with this project and get it wrapped up today. So I was brave, and I cut off the old cuffs, and I added the new, much simpler ones, and I like them so much better. I think since this has so much volume, it's a good idea to keep the details relatively simple, and this is just a really nice touch, and it keeps the jacket very neutral. Or perhaps bright green can't be considered neutral, but at least it makes it slightly more subdued. I also went ahead and made a mock-up for the collar. I did make a mock-up of the collar for my mock-up, but that was a little while ago, so I thought I wanted to make another one and fit it on the actual jacket, and I'm glad I did because there are a couple changes I'm going to make. I just want to remove a little bit of volume from the back, and I also want to make it slightly longer and a little bit narrower at the front. So I will make those changes on my pattern and transfer it to new paper and then I can get this cut out and we will be one step closer to finishing this. Alright, so I got the collar cut out and assembled and I also got it lined. I'm actually about to run out of green thread for this project but I had just enough left to do the top stitching which I'm thrilled about. I was not kidding when I said almost out, this is how much I have left. <laughs> I cut that a little bit close, but I did manage to get it done. When I was trying this on, I thought the collar looked a little bit dull, so I actually ended up adding a pleat, so that isn't there for fitting purposes. That's there because I thought it added a bit of interest and volume and looked really nice, uh, though it does help with the shape too. I sewed the collar on around the neck, and then I tucked the seam allowance inward and whip stitched it to the lining, so that part is done. And then I ironed the collar while it was on the dress form and added some pins. So this is flaring up a little bit since I'm not the best at tailoring. Tomorrow I'm going to add some tacking stitches, there's definitely going to be one here to hold that pleat in place as well as one here and here. I might add a couple at the back too, and then I'm going to steam the whole thing. And after a couple days, I might be able to remove the stitching and have it stay in place. I do have time tonight to do this, but I would much rather work on the hat that I'm going to wear with this, and then I can do some hand sewing downstairs while I wind down for the night. I've been watching way too much of Miss Maisel and The Crown, which is what inspired this 1950s dramatic piece. And I just finished watching the Kennedy episode of The Crown, so now I'm all on board when it comes to pillbox hats. Making it relatively large to help balance out the coat, and also because I have fairly wide shoulders and I find when my hair is more volume and I'm wearing a larger hat, things tend to be a little bit more flattering on me. So I'm going to make this pretty large, though I am hoping I didn't make it too large, because I recently did that with an Edwardian hat and I'm still kicking myself over it. For hats, I I just use the felt weight interfacing that they sell at Joann's. This is usually used in purses, but it works really well for headpieces too. And then I'm going to take some of this hanging wire and whip stitch it into the edges. I also have some tin snips for cutting the wire, some pins for securing the pieces together, some binder clips to hold the wire in place while I sew it, and then some thread. I'm going to use the heavy duty stuff to sew the two pieces together, and this stuff for sewing in the wire. And for this hat, I'm actually going to sew the wire in to give it shape and then sew the two pieces together before covering it. Usually I would cover the pieces separately then sew them together, but for this I'm going to be padding the top and I want to get a more domed effect. So I'm actually going to sew them together first and then do the padding and drape material over top of it. That'll make it a little bit more challenging to construct, but it's such a simple shape that I don't think it's going to give me too much trouble. Then again, those are famous last words, aren't they? So this is what I'm going to be up to for the night. My dad recorded part of Mythbusters Marathon, so we're probably going to watch that. And I shall get to work, and I will report back with you guys in the morning. Hopefully I will have something that 
that resembles a hat and we can finish up the coat. So this is what I'm working with this morning. I got the wire sewn into both pieces of interfacing and then I also went ahead and lined them and whip stitched them together. So now I'm going to go ahead and put some batting around this edge to round that off and also stack some batting in the middle to get more of a domed shape. Traditionally that domed shape would be sculpted out of buckram over a hat form as opposed to built up over a flat surface but I don't have a hat form and I also don't particularly like working with buckram and heavyweight fabrics since I find the heavyweight materials tend to overwhelm the buckram. So I'm doing it out of interfacing and padding and we're just going to make the best of it. So yeah I'm going to pad this up, I'm going to pad this edge and then I can start covering it. I went ahead and added some batting to the top. I just cut out a bunch of small circles and stacked them in the center and then I put a rectangular strip all the way around the edge to round that off a little bit and a large piece of batting over top of that that was cut to a large circle. And then I put my wool over top of that and I've just pinned it to the sides. Now I'm going to gather the bottom edge and stitch it on. The collar is tacked on and I did a fitting and I'm pretty happy with how it looks. Um, over time I would like to be able to remove these tacking stitches but for now it is fine and I'm really happy with the silhouette and everything of it. So that's good. Now all this needs is a hem. Then over here I have the hat which I finished. So as I said I added the padding and then I draped this top piece over top of it and then I cut out a rectangle that was 30 inches long and 7 inches wide. I sewed it into a loop and then I folded it in half and top stitched across the folded edge and then I pulled it over top of the hat and that sort of sealed the edges of the batting and this top piece and I whip stitched around it and then whip stitched the bottom edge to the lining. Overall I'm pretty happy with this. I do think it's a little bit large but once I have my hair done it should be fine. I've only been up here for about an hour but I skipped breakfast today so I think I'm going to go downstairs and get some breakfast and start planning the 1950s style dress that will go underneath it. I was originally going to use this fuchsia cotton but after washing it it became quite stiff and it feels almost like cheap heavy bed sheets. So I'm not as thrilled with this as I was originally and I think it might be a little bit too much with the green. I'd also love to be able to wear my Peggy pumps from Royal Vintage and they're black and white and I don't know how well that will complement this fabric. So I might look in my stash and see if I have any white fabrics I could use but if I make the dress white then it's not going to be very wintry. It's going to be a lot more in line with spring but the jacket's also more in line with spring. So I'm kind of conflicted and definitely need of inspiration. So I'm going to look through Pinterest and patterns on Etsy and stuff like that and then when I come back up here I can finish the jacket, draft the 1950s dress and clean because this room is an absolute disaster. The floor especially. I haven't tidied up between projects in weeks. I cleaned up a little bit. Not that you can really tell. I promise it's cleaner. I actually vacuumed except this was clearly too big to be picked up by the vacuum. Anyway, I figured out a plan for the dress. I don't feel like this is particularly original, but I want to do something relatively simple, and I think this will look wonderful with the coat. Since the coat is so ridiculous in terms of proportion, I want to keep the dress underneath it somewhat simple so it doesn't look too outrageous and costumey, even though I'm all for outrageous and costumey in certain situations. I've been trying to use this book for inspiration, and it's one of those things where it's an excellent resource, but I end up getting too many ideas while reading through it and then I want to have a really oddly shaped neckline with a collar and a roughly lapel and raglan sleeves and more ruffles on the sleeves and it just my imagination gets really out of hand when I'm reading through this. So I've toned it down and this is what I'm going to go for. I think I'm going to use ivory fabric instead of the pink that I originally purchased for this. I have this really pretty lightweight cotton and then I also have this rayon fabric which is a darker ivory and I thought I might be able to layer these and create something really nice and do some pleating details out of the sheer fabric and just do something really interesting despite its simplicity. Now I'm already kind of kicking myself for this idea because I hate working with sheer fabrics. I did do it late last year with some success so I'm hoping the sheer fabric gods will be kind to me and I can do all the pleats and they will turn out evenly and nicely and the fabric won't warp too much but we shall see. This is what I have done so far. I draped the pattern. I didn't do a great job of draping it but it's all gonna work out when I make the mock-up and transfer it to paper. Here's what the front looks like. This portion will be covered by pleats but have a solid base so I can mount the buttons and everything and then it will be a similar story on the back. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off the dress form and transfer it to paper and make a mock-up and hope for the best.
just finished so I just finished my mock-up for this piece and doing the pattern alterations and I'm really happy with how the pattern and shape of it is coming along but unfortunately I don't think my material plans are really going to work this material is a rayon and some rayons don't do well when they get wet they're either woven specifically for dry cleaning or woven to be washed and I think this one is woven to be dry cleaned because it's just a spritzer of water as you can see as I'm spraying this on the fabric it's shriveling up uh, so this does come out when I iron it, but I don't want to do all of this pleating detail only to have it wrinkle up like this when I try and wash it. And since this is supposed to be a more wearable piece, I'm just not comfortable using this. I don't want to have to pay to get it dry cleaned and worry about the dry cleaners ruining it. I'd rather just save this cut of fabric for something where I want to embrace this texture or for a historical piece. Um, those things aren't necessarily mutually exclusive, but it's not the look I'm going for the, for this piece. So instead, I'm just going to use the cotton on its own and it'll have a simpler look. That does potentially change my pleating plans for the bodice, so I suppose it doesn't have to. So I guess I will do the pin tucking with this, which will make my job easier since it's going to be a lot simpler to work with. Uh, it won't shift around on me as much, but I am sort of bummed because I really love the color of this and I was excited to finally have a use for it since it was one of those materials I sort of regretted getting. And now I regret it a little bit more instead of having a function for it. However, I do think this effect is kind of neat and it could be used to my advantage with the piece, just not on the- Hello everyone! So it is Sunday morning and I'm sorry I didn't update you more yesterday. In the evening I was really thrown off by my original fabric choices not working, though I did still continue to work and move forward. I got all of the pleats marked onto the fabric and then top stitched them down. I ended up stitching a quarter inch away from the edge of the pleats as opposed to right on the fold, so this way they look a little bit more natural and have more texture. I also sewed the darts and I also top stitched and marked the pleats in the back. I marked all of these with a the water soluble marker. I really really like this marking pen. I picked it up from Joann's and it's come off of every fabric that I've used it on even after ironing over top of it. So I've been really impressed with this and it's got a really fine nib. I love it for marking boning channels and whatnot. I still need to find and try the heat erasable marking pens but so far I've been pleased with this. So after I got all of the pleats and darts done last night I rinsed this off and let it hang to dry overnight. So all I've done this morning is re-ironed the pleats since the water loosened them a little bit. Sort of business is going to be to cut out the collar or the facing for the top edge, which looks like this. So I'm going to cut this out of the same coordinating material and get it sewn on. Then I'm going to pick buttons from my button stash to use for this project. I don't think the original ones I picked are going to work very well. These have a strong ivory cast, so though they look nice with the rayon fabric I was originally going to use as an overlay, they don't look quite as nice with this pure white fabric. So I'm going to see if I have some colored buttons that will complement this or some pure white buttons I can use instead but I think I'm probably going to land on doing colored buttons uh, just because I have more of those in my stash. So I went ahead and cut out the facing and then I sewed a half inch away from the bottom edge and I used that stitching as a guide for turning the bottom edge inward. Then I sewed the top edge around the neckline with the right side facing the wrong side and now I'm going to turn this outward and pin it in place and top stitch it down and that will create my collar and hopefully a relatively clean finish. Okay, the collar is on and I'm just waiting for my iron to heat up so I can press it. And it is now time to find buttons to go with this project. Look how cool these ones are. I love the label on these. I'm assuming they're from the 1920s. I got them on Etsy for like $2, but they're not going to work for this piece. I love these ones too. I got these in Lancaster, Pennsylvania and they were a dollar a card. You know, those might actually work. I want to do a little bow on this. I don't know if I have a fabric that complements that, but I do like the idea of doing colorful yellow buttons. I think that's fun. I could also do red buttons. Or little green ones could be cute. Then it would match the coat. I'm leaning towards yellow, yellow or green. So I'm just gonna dig through a couple of fabric drawers and see if I have a fabric that would complement this and the green in the coat that I could use for a bow around the collar. I will probably end up looking in my scrap drawer, but I also wanna check in here. If I use the red buttons, I could use this for a bow. Those look nice together. Mm. Ooh, I could use this, yeah. Does that match the coat though? I think we have a winner. So I think this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the yellow buttons with this floral. I like how they'll add a little bit of color and more of a spring flare to this dress. 
And I have a couple cards of those, so I don't think I'm going to need that many. I'm just going to take a picture and post this on Instagram and ask people which buttons they thought I could use. I know I just said I was going to use the yellow, but I kind of had a little change of heart because there's red in the coat lining. And I thought it might be nice to use red buttons and have a red bow to go with this. But now that I've it pinned up here, I much prefer the yellow buttons. I really like the little bit of texture they add. And they're just such a nice pop of color. So I think I'm definitely going to go with the yellow ones, though I may still post a progress photo of this on Instagram since I'm trying to post every single day this year. Uh, and so far I've done it, but we're only a week into January, so it's important to keep it up. So the buttons are sewn on. I ended up going back and forth about which ones to use, but decided on my original choice, which is the yellow. So they're on now, and I'm going to pin up the side seams and do a fitting. I also whipped up a sleeve pattern, which I think is going to be too big. But I thought I would pin it on and see if it fits and go from there. I also just thought this is funny. I have this trash can, and it's usually underneath here. But I put my heater there and my trash can down here, and I keep throwing fabric pieces into the heater. Um, since I'm so used to my trash being there, which is probably going to result in a fire at some point, but so far, so good. My original plan for the bodice was to have it shaped with gathers at the front, but then my sheer fabric that I was planning on using as an overlay ended up not working out, so I had to use the cotton, and I didn't want to gather this down because then it was going to look quite bulky, uh, and just not exactly the silhouette I'd envisioned. So what I ended up doing was just pleating the fabric to add a little bit more shape to this bodice, so as you can see, it flares out around the bust, right around here, and then it nips in relatively tight at the waist. I also sewed up the side seams, and I took a really large wedge out of the front because it ended up being too big since there wasn't gathering here. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I think there might be a little bit too much volume in the back, but that should smooth down with the weight of the skirt. I also drafted the sleeve pattern. The first pattern I did actually worked out pretty well. I just had to bring it in a little bit here. I also just had to add a dark here which I ended up turning into a seam to get to fit the arm side a little bit better. Also thank you for correcting me on my pronunciation in the last couple of videos. Uh, one of the problems with being self-taught is that you read a lot of stuff in books but you don't necessarily hear it out loud. So I do appreciate the correction and I will try and remember that in the future. Then I took my mock-up and I cut it apart and used it to create a pattern where I added seam allowances and now this is ready to go. So my goals for tonight are to finish this project. I need to cut out and assemble the sleeves. I also need to cut out and gather and assemble the skirt and hem it, uh, which might take me a while, but if everything goes according to plan, there should only be a couple more hours of time that need to be invested into this, but we shall see. So I was just cutting out fabric for the bow, and I was going to make a joke about this saying copyright mid-thrust, but it turns out it is actually called mid-thrust imports, which makes my joke less of a joke and more of a odd reality. Why would you name a company that? But who am I to judge? I once had a Tumblr called Angela's Extras and everyone thought the URL was Angela's Extras, so I've made my fair share of mistakes too. Anyway, I just cut out four triangles, which are going to make up the bow for this project. I'm going to sew across this edge with a three-quarter inch seam allowance, then turn it the right way out and gather along this long edge. And that's going to create a very cute shaped fussy bow, which is going to go on the collar of this piece. Speaking of this piece, I went ahead and sewed the darts. I also made these sleeves and got the sleeves sewn on. I'm not super happy with how it fits at the back. It's a little bit tight in this region, and it's worse back here, so I'm worried that the fabric is going to have issues over time since it is such a lightweight cotton, but for now it's okay, and I am going to set aside extras in case I have to do mending in the future. I also made this little piece, which is what the bow is going to be mounted to, so the bow is going to go underneath this and come out of either side. This just a little, I'm not sure what to call it, that I made out of extra cotton, and it hooks onto one of the bows in the lapel. I'm really happy with how that looks, and it was very easy to make. Now I just have to sew it on. I also have to sew buttons onto the sides of the cuffs, and then this part will be done. It just needs the skirt. So this is the bow. I ended up cutting the triangles down quite significantly since it was really, really big, and I gathered the pieces down, sewed them together. I trimmed off the excess, and then just zigzagged over top of the seam allowance to help prevent it from fraying. And now I'm going to fold it so it's like this. Um, and then I'm going to zigzag over the center line a couple more times so it will stay nice and flat underneath the little tab that I added to the blouse. I also went ahead and cut out the skirt panels, which was basically just tearing the remaining fabric I had in half. Uh, so I have two 30 inch by two yard pieces, which I'm going to sew together at the center back as well as the center front. 
It will close at the center front with more buttonholes, so I just folded that edge inward a couple times until it was thick enough to support the buttonholes. Then I sewed four of those two and three quarter inches apart, so there's a two inch space between each button. So I'm gonna open up these buttonholes and then get it sewn onto the other panel and get the button sewn on. Then I can hem the skirt and gather it and hopefully get this done and dusted tonight. Okay, so I got the tab sewn onto the bodice and then I sewed the skirt panels together and I also hemmed the skirt. I just turned it up by five inches. The overall length is 25 inches. It's going to be 24 inches long once I get it sewn onto the bodice since there's a one inch seam allowance. I also sewed the buttons onto this and then I trimmed all of the buttonholes so they're open and the loose threads are gone and I put a little fray tack over them. So I'm gonna let this set overnight. Oh, and I also got the final buttons onto the bodice. So the individual sections are pretty much done. I just have to sew them together and then finish that edge. Then I'm gonna wait to do that until tomorrow since I put some fray check on the buttonholes. So they are a little damp and I don't want to accidentally transfer any of the fray check and leave marks onto other parts of the garment, which I have unfortunately done before with other things. So I will get this finished up tomorrow, but so far I'm pretty pleased with it. There are a couple fit issues in the shoulders, which I'm not thrilled about, but I think considering how much my plans had to adapt and change just based on material, I did a pretty okay job. So I will show you guys what it looks like tomorrow. It's now 10.30, so it's time for me to go downstairs and do a bit of editing and then... Apparently my other camera's out of battery, so we're on the DSLR for the first time in a while. I cannot tell you how little I miss holding this giant beast to the camera whenever I want to film a clip of me talking. But anyway, this piece is officially done. It's the next morning now. I got the hem and the seaming done last night, so all I had to do is do up the waist seam and then add binding, and it is complete. I also potentially, I can't remember where I left off, but I think I gathered the bow a little more, and that's how it looks. I also went ahead and hemmed the coat, though I haven't ironed the hem yet, so if it looks a little lumpy, that's probably why. Overall, I'm really happy with how this turned out. I think the coat is fantastic. I love how it fits. I love how much fun it is to wear, and I think the hat will complement it really nicely. I'm really happy with the shape and the fit of the dress, but I do have a few regrets. Mistake number one is how far over these buttons are. I also wish I would have planned out the darts or the pleats or whatever you want to call this line that adds shaping earlier on, since the original plan for this when I drafted the pattern was to shape it with gathers and have the pleats be an overlay that was tacked onto a fitted panel. That was sort of done last minute and it could be a little bit more symmetrical and less sloppy. My only other wish is that I picked a different fabric for the dress. Uh, I used this on a whim, but it's a very delicate material. I'm glad I used this for a dress as opposed to a chemise because it definitely would not survive the wear and tear that chemises go through. This material is just quite delicate, so I think it's going to degrade over time and start to tear at the seams, which isn't ideal. I originally drafted this in such a way that it could be worn with or without foundations, but I think because the material is so delicate, it really needs to be worn over a girdle so there isn't as much strain on the side seams, which isn't ideal, but I can deal with it. <laughs> um, I filmed a clip of me getting ready the next day but it was sort of a fail so I'm talking over it with hopes of saving the footage. I bought seam stockings from Lake Avenue which you can see me wearing here. My petticoat is from Mod Cloth but I hate it so don't buy it. And the bra is an original vintage piece I got for like $10 on eBay. Then the dress goes on and this is really easy to get into since it unbuttons almost the entire way then buttons back up the front. If you're wondering how I did my hair and makeup I have a recent video about that. The only change is the lip color, which is Besame's or Besame's Dusty Rose from 1969. And this is an absolutely beautiful color, and I was really impressed with the formula too. So I'm definitely going to have to save up for a couple more of those. Also, while I do up the buttons here, you can see my resting sad face, which makes people stop and ask if I'm okay a lot. Off camera, I pinned a comb into the hat, so I'm just positioning it nicely in my hairdo. And I'm also putting on the belt, which is vintage from the 70s and pretty self-explanatory. I was also wearing vintage earrings, which my mom gave me, so they're probably also from the 70s. Oh, and I paired this outfit with the Peggy Pumps from Boreal Vintage. Then the coat goes on and that's it. Photos of this ensemble along with more construction notes are up on my blog and will be linked down below. So definitely go check that out. I also tried to film some nice posing clips because the coat moves really nicely, but it was so windy that everything looked awful, which was really, really disappointing. Here is a great clip where you can see the tripod falling over because my dad tied car keys to the camera strap to try and weigh it down so it wouldn't fly into frame. And this is my actual sad face because it was cold and the wind was being mean. 
So that is where the footage I filmed last weekend ends. I'm really happy with how this project turned out. I think the coat is really cute. I like the hat, though it is a little large. And I think the dress is pretty adorable as well, and it fits really nicely. I did take you through a couple of the mistakes I made during that video, like having the buttons too far to the left on the lapel, but all of those are things that I'm going to learn and get better at over time, so I'm not too fussed about them. I think I want to make a 1940s coat next, or maybe a 1930s dress. I'm all about the 20th century right now, and I'm not sure why, but I've really been enjoying these simpler projects that I can make in a couple days and actually wear on a regular basis. So if you want to see more of them and you like the format of this video, then definitely let me know and I will do my best to make more. And I will talk to all of you very, very soon.